All right, so we're gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna show you how much the ROG Ally uses coming out of the wall, how much power it's actually drawing. What we're using is a kilowatt meter, and this can measure wattage, it can measure your amps, your kilowatts per hour, it can measure quite a bit of stuff. Currently, we're on the watt setting. We're gonna see how many watts it's pulling out of the wall. Now, at idle, you're gonna get between six and 10 watts power usage. We're up a little bit higher because we've got a game launcher running in the background. But if I close all of this, it'll be about six to seven. All right, so if you look at your memory usage, it's using about 45% of your RAM. We're gonna run an experiment. Currently, I have been running test back and back and back between four and eight gigs of VRAM, three and auto and all the others. I like to run them three or four times, reboot, run them again, reboot, run them again, just to make sure that my results are repeatable and there was nothing interfering with it, no variables like Marvel Warfare updates or Windows updates or, or any game launcher updates, Steam updates, antivirus scans, you name it. So what you wanna do is, you know, wait for your system to fully load, you know, check your CPU usage, check your RAM usage, your disk usage, network usage. Make sure nothing's kinda like hogging your system. So. Now we're going to go into a game and we're going to show you. And like I said, currently we do have the eight gigs of VRAM allocation and you can set that up in Armory Crate. Um, we'll, we'll check that out here in a second. So what I'm noticing is that I've seen one or two people. Oh, and every time you readjust your VRAM allocation, it will ask you if you would like to um, redo your config or go back into a safe mode. That's probably something that can also affect your 1% lows as well. And it can also affect your game. If you click yes on that, it's going to redo the shaders and it's going to redo your game settings and it's going to redo like everything that you just did. So if you've made any changes, done any driver updates, anything like that, your experience is going to vary greatly, especially 1% lows. And if you look here, it says shader optimization up there in the corner. You want to make sure that this sits at the menu for some time because that needs to be done. If you try to jump in a game while it's still optimizing, it's going to pause and it won't resume until you're back at the menu doing nothing. So make sure that you let this do its thing and then you want to run your tests. Like I said in a previous video, a lot of YouTubers are not doing their benchmarks correctly. They're just not getting repeatable, accurate results. They're trying to rush through them to get a video out, and I understand that. But um, this is not a race. I would much rather someone be accurate. So we're going to go over here to benchmark. And I like doing this type of benchmark that's built in because it's going to have the same exact map the same exact waypoints, the same exact load on the system, it's repeatable. If you jump in a game and you start moving your controller around, you've got inputs going in and out, you've got different characters loading in and out of the game, different scenarios, even if you go to the same spot on the map, it's still gonna vary run to run, way more than a run to run on this one. This will run a little bit different on each run, of course, with the variables I mentioned. But here we go. As far as how much power it's pulling out of the wall, we're looking at about 65 watts out of the wall. It'll peak up to about 68 in some tests like Cinebench, but generally I would look to see about 65 watts. And we're gonna see our FPS is gonna jump around scene to scene as to be expected. Now if you look here, I also like to look at my latency, CPU and GPU latency. Now you notice at the bottom the GPU temp is zero. That's just an error with Modern Warfare where it's not picking up the sensor. But we can clearly see it in hardware info and everything else. So I'm sure that'll be fixed. You can see I can peak up to about 100 FPS. The benchmark is a little bit more stressful than an actual game is. So when I play online, I generally see between 90 and 100 FPS. I do have it capped at 100 FPS. So I'm not wasting resources trying to go over an FPS that won't be stable. Now, you can see here we are at 88 FPS. Our 1% lows are 61 FPS. And the 5% lows are 66 FPS. 
we are using FPS, um, not FPS, uh, FSR 1.0 quality. I am at 1080p, but its render resolution is 720p. So basically, it's running 720, but upscaling to 1080. So if you look here, total RAM use, it's using 94% of my RAM. That's basically what's going on in the background. I only have 6% of RAM left. So if I try to open up Spotify or a web browser or Discord or anything like that, I'm going to have horrible 1% lows because I'm going to be completely out of RAM. So if you're running a game like Modern Warfare, you want to make sure that you have everything closed, uh, especially if you're trying to run at 8 gigs, which you shouldn't. Because look, total VRAM used, 2.42 gigs. It's not worth it to add more VRAM to a game that's not even going to use it because it's not going to affect your 1% lows. And if it is, you've got something going on when you ran it at 4 gigs and you need to like readjust because I'm about to prove you wrong here, bud. All right. So we ran this over and over and again um, previously. I, I don't feel the need to keep running this over and over again. Uh, hop in the Rock Ally Discord if you'd like me to do a live session and, and show you one-on-one because -on -one. <laughs> a lot of people just don't believe me. They're just so butthurt. All right. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go to settings. I'm going to show you how to change the VRAM allocation. So what you do is you go to I think it's operating mode, GPU settings, you can click right here, you can see we're on eight gigs. And now we're gonna go down to four gigs. And you can see it changed it to four. We're gonna restart now. And it's gonna reboot. One thing to notate, when you change your VRAM, I've mentioned it before, as soon as this thing comes back up, it's gonna take some time because it has to reallocate the memory. It has to retrain that memory. And that might take some time. All right. So, we will wait. Yeah, out of curiosity, I wonder um, how everyone else is liking their unit. I know a lot of people love it. If you want to drop a comment below, tell me what you think about it. If you love it, if you hate it, tell me. I, I just, I love mine. I haven't had any issues out of it. One of the other issues we're seeing is the memory card failures. But me being a prior Steam Deck owner, Switch owner, PSP, uh, I mean, just every handheld you could think of out there besides like the INEOs and stuff, I've had. And I've had issues at one time or another with the SD cards, especially when you get into sustained loads and installing large games or running large games. They're great for emulators and stuff like that, but even the, um, like, like the Steam Deck, it had issues. Steam Deck had issues from day one. They just actually fixed a lot of them pretty quickly, but I know early adopters will all tell you that it was not without its own issues. Every platform, when it's new, is going to have some issues. All right, so we're going to minimize that. We're going to come over here, and we're going to make sure that everything is exited, like Spotify and the EA Store... And then we're going to look at Task Manager, and we're going to wait for this to auto back down. And generally, it'll go around 30% or so. So there's just stuff running in the background that's settling in, different apps, checking for updates, just random different processes that have to start up with your computer. By default, you're going to be hitting over 50% anyways, so it's always best to tune your system. So there you go. See how it dropped down to 28%? Now we're not going to be fighting against an update or fighting against something running in the background. And this should go down to about 1%. It's just probably checking different stuff in Windows. 2% well, two, two is fine, but 5% is a little high. We'll sort there. Okay, so that's task managers are being weird. So that's good. All right, so we're going to open up Modern Warfare again. And... um. We'll check out the power usage and see if it's any different on 4 gigs. And we're loading into Modern Warfare now. Controller's on. A lot of people ask, well, why do you use a controller? Um, honestly, I use both. I just, this is easier for the camera and it's just easier when I'm, you know, chilling sometimes just to set it on a desk. And then remember the question that this asked us earlier. 
Do you want to go into safe mode? Do you want to reconfigure? Do you want to do recommended settings? Always hit no, because if you spent time tweaking this setting, the settings like I do, you're just going to have to go back in and redo it. And then we're also going to see the shaders in just a second tell us that they need to be optimized. So we're going to, once again, let that do its thing. Uh, I saw a gizmo tech slip. Um, I, I guess that's how you pronounce his name. He's a big laptop reviewer, 100 plus thousand subscribers on YouTube. He was trying to run Modern Warfare benchmarks while the shaders were pending optimizing and dozens of people in the comments were trying to tell him that that's why his numbers were so low and that's why he was having so much frame stuttering. But guess what? He said we were wrong. He's not a Modern Warfare player. But yet, we were wrong. Even though everyone was telling him that if you just rerun the benchmarks, your numbers will be completely different. But no, like I said before in a previous video, most YouTubers have no idea what they are doing. And I don't say all, I say most because a lot of them don't know what they're doing. All right, so now we're gonna go in here and even I don't know what I'm doing sometimes and you guys are really quick to tell me in the comments. But um, generally when I get called out i like to learn if there's something i'm wrong about and 99.9 percent .9 of the time the people who say i'm wrong have never been able to prove me right they've never been able to give me valid points they've never been able to give me anything other than hearsay and just hate speech and just anger and bitterness towards the device and never speaking from experience if you speak from experience and you can take a video like i'm doing uncut unedited raw that's the best way. I don't I don't do any editing. I, I just I got over that kind of stuff. I don't have time. I don't care. I just want to get my point across and try to help people. So we're looking at actually a little lower on the power usage, which is interesting because you remember before we were using about 65 watts. Wow, we are almost eight watts less power usage at the wall by just allocating less VRAM. That is really cool. I did not expect that, to be honest. That's actually really nice to know because that also means our device is probably gonna run cooler and last a little bit longer. One of the big things that I have on mind that some people don't is a custom fan curve. You hear my fans actually running and that's keeping my device cooler and allowing it to boost higher and to get better FPS sometimes. Um, we're going to show you here, the FPS numbers, boom, guess what? Exactly the same as before. The same 1% lows, the same FPS, and here you go. Look at that RAM usage, total RAM usage 76%, and total VRAM usage 2.42. It's the exact same. You can repeat these numbers all day, every day. If you just take out the variables, I hope this video was helpful to someone. Drop a subscribe, drop a like, do do the thing. You know what to do. Just, you know, think about what you're thinking about. And uh, hope y'all are having fun out there. If there's anything I can do, holler at me in the Discord. Jump in the Rog Alley Discord, ping me, yell at me, scream at me. Do whatever you want to do. And I hope y'all have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I'm out.